The Anet A8 3D printer is the very first 3D printer I've ever looked at or ever put together. And so far so good, I've not had too many issues when actually putting it together or even printing. So I've actually done my first print on this and it came out pretty well. Now to put this together did take me quite a long time and I'm going to detail a few things of how I put it together and the sort of things that I learned as I went along. I'm not going to detail it entirely, I'm just not skilled enough for that and I don't feel confident enough showing you guys who maybe want to buy a printer like this on how to put it together. But I can certainly show you the little things that I learned along the way. So I do believe the Anette A8 3D printer has quite a big following on Facebook. I shall try and find that Facebook group for you guys and link it in the description below. That'll be quite interesting to see what other people are doing with their printers. But as far as I'm aware, this 3D printer does need a lot of modifications afterwards after building it. There's a few issues such as, you know, fire risks because it can get quite hot apparently, as well as that it doesn't have a switch, so you can't turn it on and off. The only way you can do that is by, you know, your wall socket. Not a good thing, especially where, you know, safety is concerned. But if you're just after something very cheap and you're not going to be leaving it alone for any length of period of time, then it could be an option for you. And especially if you just want to dip your toes into the 3D space. So you just got to be aware that you do need to do a few things. And I will link those videos in the description below. So the first thing I needed to do is assemble the frame. Now that was relatively simple. It was very straightforward. And again, those video guides are really, really good. And they will show you exactly what you need to do to assemble this frame. And it, they really don't leave any stone unturned. They really do show you exactly what you need to do. Now, the reason you really do need to use a YouTube video is because this printer does not come with any instructions apart from the instructions which are stored on the little SD card. But even then, they are not very good and they're not very detailed and you can get confused very, very quickly, especially if you've never done something like this before. And I'm certainly one of those people. So everything went together pretty straightforward. You know, I did make a few mistakes with the cabling. I know on the main board that some of the actual, you know, switches that needed to be inserted on the frame, I didn't get them the right way around because when I first turned it on and done the first initial settings, and um, the actual nozzle printer head just smashed right into the side of the frame. So that was a big mistake on my part because I didn't follow it properly. But anyway, it was very simple and straightforward to get it working again. You can actually go into the system settings and actually test each of these switches to make sure they're working properly. And obviously if you press them one and it's not doing anything, then you need to swap it around. Now the heater bed apparently can become quite hot and the actual cable in itself can become damaged quite easily. So apparently you do need to strip it back and solder it directly onto the actual heater bed. Now I've not done that yet. I'll maybe cover that in another video, but apparently if you do that, it fixes it and it just reduces all the safety risks and stuff like that. But yeah, I might get onto that at some other point. So the first thing we need to do when we calibrate our printer, so this is the first thing you're gonna do when you actually switch it on. Hopefully everything does turn on you, for you on the first time. Now the one thing that I found was I had my limiter switches the wrong way around. So when you first do what I'm going about to show you, it might cause the machine to go a bit nuts. So be ready to just switch it off because you don't want to burn anything out. So the first thing you need to do is press the middle button when it turns on onto the screen. Then you need to go down to quick settings. Now for me, I thought the enter button would have obviously been the middle button, but it's not, it's the one on the right hand side. So click your enter button onto quick settings and go down to home all. And then obviously click enter. So I didn't quite catch that on camera, so I'll show you again. So that system is actually checking to see where it is basically. So you'll see, I'll zoom in on the camera. Your limiter switches are just here. There's one obviously at the back, just underneath the actual heater bed. 
and you know you've built it so you'll be aware of what they are you also have one just down here just on the bottom there so those limiter switches are just to prevent the actual motor going too far now i had mine the wrong way around so my actual extruder just this here was actually trying to force its way to the left there and it you know i had to quickly turn it off to prevent me burning anything out chances are of you having it properly calibrated to begin with uh, slim to none. So the next thing we need to do, we need to turn off the actual motors. So to do that, we go to quick settings again, and we go all the way down to the bottom, and then we press disable stepper. And you'll hear a little noise and it just turns off the system. And there we have it. So now we can actually calibrate it properly. Okay, so once you've turned the stepper motors off, basically that's going to disable that motor there, and that motor there, and this motor here. It basically means so you can move it around like this. You will find this one won't move if you don't turn that off that stepper motor, and make sure you do, so you don't want to damage these motors. So, best way I think to calibrate this particular 3D printer is to simply lower this so the extruder nozzle here is as close to the heat bed as possible. Now you can move this piece of paper in and out but you can still feel the top of the nozzle if that makes sense just just on here. Now once you've actually lowered this to that position so just using these two here very easily you need to then just on this um, like limiter switch here. So we've got a limiter switch there. And as you can see, just on the top there. And to actually adjust it, we just unscrew them. And what you need to do is you just need to place this so the switch is only just on. And the easy way to do that is in your settings, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, let's make sure that the limit switch is only just on when it's touching this top half. Now, once you've done that, then you can now proceed back and then try and uh, get it in the right position using the home all again. So let's, let's try again. So what should happen now is when I go and pull that tray out, it should still be in that same position I set it to. So let's give it a go. So like I said before, let's go and um, disable the stepper motor. And when you disable it, you'll hear the motors turn off. We don't need this anymore. We'll pull this tray out. Now what should happen is it should allow me to actually move this across and I should be able to still put this piece of paper in. There we go. So. So far, so good. Let's see if we can get this piece of paper in. And as you can see, I can still move it around. And as well as that, when you look at the nozzle, it's just, just touching the paper. You'll be able to see that on camera there. Right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that it's all level. So that's where we move on to the heater bed. Now, if you want to know if your actual limit switches are working, so we've got one on the bottom here, and we've got one at the back, and um, we've also got another one just here. Now, to actually know if they're working or not, just go up to, just come out of there, and then we go down to position, just on the main menu, look into there, and then all your position switches are labeled here. And all we need to do is we need to go to the, for example, X position fast, and then this will tell us whether it's working. This is the actual X axis, so mine's working. As you can see, it changed to on. And we come out of that, and then we go to Y position. We'll check whether that's working or not. Yeah, that's working. And then we'll come out of that, and we'll check whether Z position is working. Now, the Z position I was mentioning before about the calibration, and this is important. And we'll check whether that's working or not. And, and as you can see, it says on, 
I didn't need to actually do that. Um, yeah, because the systems are all ready to go. So the system is working as far as the limit switches. So although it's level with the actual heater bed, it might not be level across it, if that makes sense. It could be like slightly out on the side here or anything like that. Now, when you first installed your heater bed, the instructions that I've found are is to make sure these are as tight as possible. So your four screws holding these little springs in, they're as tight as possible. Now this is uh, probably because you can then calibrate it later on. So if you find that you're maybe it's slightly too high on this end, so maybe when you're pushing your nozzle over that end, it gets stuck. All you probably need to do is either tighten it up or you might just need to adjust these pillars here. It might just be slight, ever so slightly too low on this end or too high on that end. But if you just play around with it just ever so slightly, don't tweak it too much because you're going to send out the calibration of the actual point of your pin of the extrude nozzle on top of your bed. And then, yeah, just uh, adjust it, adjust it here, adjust it on the back there, and just, until so it's just level. You could even use a level as well, a spirit level, and that would probably help a lot as well. And once you've just got it just nice, then you can go and start, you know, testing out it and seeing how it goes, see how it prints. Once I'd completed the actual building of the actual printer, I was left with a, quite a lot of nuts and bolts. Not entirely sure what they are. But I wouldn't worry too much. Clearly, they've just put in more than that's needed for the actual construction of this device. So, not entirely sure why, but you know, the more the merrier, I guess. Now, the parts of this printer are readily available online. You get a plethora of different components for this, as well as that, you can actually upgrade a lot of the different components. Well, the main thing I would upgrade probably relatively straight away would be the actual power supply. I did mention in the first video I did of the unboxing, but I wasn't too entirely sure how well that was gonna perform. And yeah, it's not the best. It doesn't have a fan, for example, so it's gonna get pretty hot as well as that, you know, it's gonna be cheap. So you do run the risk of breaking and burning things out and, you know, possibly even causing a fire. I highly doubt it's rated or certified by anyone. It will just be a cheap Chinese power supply. So I'd look into getting that replaced and I think I'm going to be replacing mine pretty soon and I'll do a video on that on how to actually replace it. Now the actual heater bed apparently draws quite a lot of power and apparently it can potentially damage the actual main board. Now a lot of people have been installing these MOSFET power supplies or power converters, I'm not entirely sure what they exactly what they do yet, I've not looked into it too much but they cost about six or seven pounds about $10 if you're in the US. And basically what you need to do is you need to wire the actual heat bed through this power board and into the main board. And it basically just, you know, regulates the power supply and ensure everything's working properly. And it just reduces the chances of you burning out the main board. The final modification that I've seen done on this printer is to actually add a power switch. The switches they use are familiar to me because I use the exact same ones on my retro gaming coffee tables. You will, however, need to print out a bit of casing to actually hold it and house it. But apart from that, it'd be very straightforward to fit it. And I would do that alongside actually fitting a new power unit. And yeah, you'll need a new power unit fitted with a fan. And if you can get one of them, great. It will make this thing a hell of a lot safer. So this is what I managed to do on my first test print. Now it's not finished. I didn't have enough filament to actually do it. Obviously, it's sort of left the head off. This is meant to be a Baymax, you know, off the Disney film. Um, Big Hero 6, I think it's called. Yeah, it's meant to be a Baymax. Now, for my first attempt, I think it's pretty darn good for what I know about 3D printers. Now, it might look utter pants to you. It's got like, um, it's a bit rough on the edges. Whether that's a limitation of the 3D printer, I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure you'll probably be able to tweak it and get better results but so far so good i think that's not a bad attempt now what i would like to know is all these bubbles do i need this like um tape on top of it i have no idea if you know more about this than me maybe you'll be able to tell me in the comment section below maybe you just peel it off i'm not entirely sure actually but anyway i'm 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 moving off topic off to topic even now yeah so that's my first attempt i want to get myself some more uh, filament and have another go but that took about three hours just to print that. And yeah, not a bad attempt, I guess, for the first go. And it, it probably doesn't show up very well on the camera because it's white, but so far so good. 
So that's all I've got to say so far on this printer. It does a decent job. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It'll give you a bit of an insight of what to expect from a cheap 3D printer. If you're just thinking about getting into this sort of thing, then maybe consider it. I shall leave all the links in the description below. Just bear in mind all the things that I've said about it. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to check out the website, mxqproject.com, the Facebook group, Twitter, and of course, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We shall see you very soon.